There's an easy and fast way to not only level up your character's XP, but also every gun in Modern Warfare 3 instantly. And not only that, I'm going to show you guys all the tips and tricks I have to not only get the Gilded Camo, the Forged Platinum Camo, the Priceless Polyatomic Camo, and most importantly, the Last Mastery Craft, the Interstellar Camo that you can get now on Modern Warfare 3. But let's first talk about leveling your guns and gaining XP for your character and the best way to do it possible. And in a recent update, there's been multiple different XP glitches that just got patched, such as a Kill Trick Sentry Gun glitch in Zombies, and a couple out of the map ones. However, I still have two of the fastest ways and the easiest ways to level up your guns and characters in the game. In the first way, you need to navigate over to the zombies category and go ahead and boot up with the desired weapon in your insured slot. Now, not only could you use your Modern Warfare 3 weapons, but if you really wanted to, you could level up and get camels for Modern Warfare 2 weapons as there is a different set of challenges. Once you have your class set equipped and you don't need any attachments, go ahead and also include the decoy grenade as your tactical, a throwing knife for your lethal, and then most importantly, the first field upgrade that you have available and go ahead and boot into your match now once you're in a match the first thing i want you guys to do is find the nearest vehicle it does not matter the type of vehicle but once you're in it drive around for just about a minute after you're done driving around for a minute there's gonna be multiple different expo locations that spawn up on the map and they're gonna be indicated like this i highly recommend even if it means driving farther but to go to the one with the least amount of players players on the map will indicate as green and this is important but once you get to the expo location you want to eliminate any zombies in that area and alongside call the expo extract now just for number sake you get 20 xp for zombies zombie kill and in multiplayer you'll get 100 xp per player kill so to compare the two if you get 100 zombie eliminations that's equivalent to 20 player kills in multiplayer and let me just say with this trick i'm about to show you guys it's going to be a lot more zombies than players anyways but once a helicopter comes in you want to get on and off the helicopter immediately or even just shoulder tap the vehicle and the reason for that is the game will think that you're in the helicopter and reduce that timer from 40 seconds to four seconds in a blink of an eye and go ahead and take off and the reason you want to do this so quickly is because the more extracts mean the more zombies for example if you call the first extract in you'll get around 20 zombies the second extract will be 40 and it'll go in and duplicate every single time so the faster you can do this the more zombies and the more xp and your tactical and field upgrades are going to be important to this method as well because with the decoy grenade they actually act as a monkey bomb if you guys don't know in traditional zombies you'll throw a monkey bomb all the zombies will go ahead and isolate to one location and eventually blow up however with the decoy grenade it'll go ahead and attract every single zombie to that area but it will not blow up not killing any of them which allows you to get a bunch of eliminations and actually zombies drop the decoy grenades as well so you can have an endless supply of them and also when it comes to the field upgrades any eliminations you get with the field upgrade will actually count towards the weapon you're holding but at all times make sure you have that desired weapon in your hand that you're trying to level up and it should be very very quickly because the field upgrade will one tap no matter what and also some mistakes i made that i learned from is do not pick up a nuke because that will actually eliminate all the zombies in your area and you won't get any xp for it and also don't pick up the insta kill because any kills you get with the insta kill will not count towards your multiplayer zombie camos so it's up to you if you want to pick it up, but you'll still get the XP. And then once you're finally done in the last five to 10 minutes, I highly recommend extracting and repeating this process multiple times. It gets very easy, especially when you're working on guns like the sniper or shotgun. We're going up against sweaty players is going to be too hard. And the second method before I go ahead and show you guys the easiest and best class setups to get the gold, forge, prices, and interstellar is actually going to be what playlist to play when you're playing multiplayer. And although zombies is the fastest way to level up your guns and your character, you might not want to shoot zombies all the time and make it a little bit switch to multiplayer. The best way and the fastest way to level up is to play the hardcore playlist with these three game modes all three of these game modes are great but going from worst to best the first game mode would be domination domination is good because the games last a very long amount of time so you're able to get as many kills as possible however if you want any more xp than just 100 per kill you're gonna have to be near or defending a flag or capture one that'll give you 200 xp however not a lot of times you're gonna want to waste capturing a flag because you could go ahead and get those kills instead the second game mode is hardpoint and this is similar to domination however the zones are always moving making it a lot easier to get the kills while in the zone or defending it and that xp will also be a lot greater when you're either in the zone or shooting into the zone but the third and best zone for leveling up guns or getting xp is going to be kill confirmed and you also might be wondering why are we playing hardcore well because your guns aren't leveled up and having to go with no attachments is easy to use when everybody's one shot and that's why hardcore is the superior but kill confirmed is great because you only get 50 xp per elimination so you can level up two guns at once and what i mean by that is go ahead and run around with one gun and just get any kills you want with it and have a gun in your secondary that you're not really going to use too much such as a a grenade launcher or a knife and anytime you see a tag you'll get about 100 xp for getting the eliminations 25 xp for getting the defense and 250 xp for getting your own tag so as long as you're holding the weapon you want to level up in your hand that xp is going straight to it so i highly recommend running around with a gun that you know is easy to level up and a gun that's a little bit harder like a grenade launcher pick up the tags with that gun in hand and you're gonna level up two guns at the same time very quickly and once your guns are all leveled up i then recommend going for the camo challenges because you could actually do all the challenges in just one game by doing these tricks for every 
AR, you're going to have four different challenges to do before you unlock the gold challenge. That being getting 50 eliminations with the gun, 50 eliminations while ADSing, 15 headshots, and 25 kills while in tactical stance. Now, that last challenge is definitely the hardest, but there are certain attachments you could use on every single assault rifle, making it a lot easier. If you guys don't know, you can go on tag stance by default, which I highly recommend before even entering the match. When you do that, you actually reduce the amount of aim you have, excuse me, accuracy, making it a lot harder to even hit any of your shots. And these are the three attachments I was talking about that you could rock on every single assault rifle, being the Merc 4 Grip, the SL Razor Hawk a Laser, and then most importantly, the SVA Factory Stock. Now, all of these attachments here affect the tactical stance, so that when you aim in, your aim looks like this, and on top of that, your recoil is almost non-existent. And when you're playing a game of like hardcore, you land one bullet, even at a long range, like, that well they're gonna get eliminated now moving on to the battle rifle we have four different challenges as well you can get 50 eliminations with the weapon 50 elimination while in fully auto 10 eliminations with a magnification scope and 15 headshots as well before you get the golden camo which is get three operator kills with one magazine now, i wanted to make note that i've seen a lot of players making the same mistake with this last challenge making it a lot longer of a process that being you need to get three eliminations in one magazine now if you go for six eliminations in the same magazine that does not count as two meaning every time you get three eliminations you need to either reload or die if you continue to go on a rampage and go from six to nine eliminations that does not duplicate the amount of times you completed the challenge once you get three the game registers that and you don't go ahead and get another go until you reload or die and also there's another glitch with the 10 kills with a magnification scope a magnification scope is anything above 2.5x and you can see on the attachments it'll actually say 7.5 5.5 4.8 4.8 4 magnification however you guys can see that it's a lot harder to shoot especially the recoil jumps and the visuals not really there however if you follow stats Step one being leveling up every single gun you should have this slate reflector sight which actually counts as a magnification scope and that's so important because it makes things a lot easier to see and even land your shots as you can see those three kills came easily now moving on to the smgs we get 50 eliminations with the striker 25 in hip fire 10 while crouching or sliding and 15 affected by your stun and that one is going to be the hardest one that basically means you have to use either the stun grenade flash grenade or if you have it unlocked the snapshot grenade and then get the elimination and the best way to do this challenge is actually in free for all but there's another thing you could do as well go up one in your category to where it says infantry vest and go ahead and switch over to engineer vest that'll actually multiply the amount of stuns you could carry in a hand so instead of having one you have two and with an ammo box you can have up to three in just one life now moving on the shotguns you need 50 eliminations 50 while hip firing 10 while adsing 15 double and then of course two kills shortly after sprinting these challenges are pretty straightforward if you use this class now this is the best class i found for this shotgun and i'll show you the other two but i highly recommend taking these classes of hardcore because these guns are a little bit difficult to use especially from medium to long range however in hardcore you land one or two shots and you'll get the elimination and moving on to the lmg you have to get 50 eliminations 10 eliminations while penetrating kills 10 eliminations with full attachments and then 10 double kills now the hardest challenge and you're gonna get this challenge a lot is actually the 10 penetration kills at least it was hard until i learned this the maps you want to focus on when it comes to the map voting are these four it's going to be scrapyard terminal high rise and then most importantly rust rust is pretty obvious why but for the other three maps why it's so important you play on this is because penetration kills don't count as your traditional wall ban kills just like in other call of duty where you had to shoot a player through a wall or a piece of concrete for it to count as a penetration kill but in this call of duty all you got to do is actually shoot a player through a glass railing or even a staircase and those three maps including rust make it a four have the most around the map and if the glass isn't broken that counts as a penetration kill and if you're playing on hardcore it just takes one bullet with these lmgs now moving on to the marksman rifle we have to get 50 11 eliminations 50 headshots 10 eliminations with no attachments and then two eliminations at 15 times now this is currently glitched meaning if you're going for the two eliminations at 15 times you don't have to go for two eliminations in one life then die if you spawn in get one elimination you don't change your classes spawn and get another elimination and die that counts as one time and that'll be a repeating glitch you'll see on a couple other guns i'll mention here in a bit and because you have to get 10 eliminations with no attachments the best way to complete all the marksman rifles is to do them all at once so rock the gun here with no attachments play one match with it you'll get probably close to 50 eliminations or you'll get that and maybe just slack on the head kill department and then load into another match and go for the headshots and makes this a very easy grind now moving on to the snipers i thought this was going to be the most difficult but it actually turned out to be the most easiest once i learned this new trick but the challenge goes 15 one shot kills three eliminations per magazine which you guys know already 50 eliminations while ADS scene, and then 50 kills uh, with the gun itself. Now, the second challenge I thought I was going to struggle with the hardest because you basically need 50 quick scope kills because you need 50 kills right after ADS scene. Uh -huh. However, after talking to swag, you only really need to get elimination after three seconds of ADS scene. So it's not your traditional quick scope. You could get a kill right after about three seconds of ADS. Now, the pistols are a little bit easier. You need to get 10 eliminations with another player damaging you, 15 with the akimbo, 10 eliminations while moving, 50 while ADSing, and then 50 in general. 
Now, the best way to complete this challenge is actually in any hardcore game mode, the ones that I listed earlier. And if you're struggling on doing these daily challenges to unlock this stuff, such as the akimbo, but as long as you follow my first step, if you max out every single pistol, you actually unlock the akimbo attachment, making this grind a lot easier as well. Then, of course, we have the grenade launchers and the melee weapons. Now, these are very straightforward. You just need to get eliminations with, and there's no attachments for it, so that should be an easy grind. Now, once all the gold challenges are done, you'll finally unlock the forge challenge, which you guys can start doing. As you can see, I have here my grenade launcher. Now, what's different with these challenges compared to the golden challenges is every weapon has their own challenge. You'll never see the same challenge twice, and although it may seem hard, it's actually a lot easier than getting gold. However, there are going to be certain loadouts you have to use for each weapon that'll make it a lot easier to complete each challenge. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that right now on the screen, as well as the challenge for each weapon so you know, but these are going to be the best ideal loadouts for the challenge given. I wouldn't say these are the meta loadouts, but if you're going for tax and skills, this is going to be the best one to do it with, and I'll show you that for every single gun for the Forge category. And while we're showing you that, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my overall opinions on MW3 before we get into the priceless camos, which I'll also give you my settings as well at the end of the video. But a lot of people have actually been enjoying Modern Warfare 3, and myself included. Now, do I think this game is by all means perfect and the number one game on the market right now? No, but I do think this is one of the best Call of Duties we've had in a minute. Close enough to Modern Warfare 2019, which still has my heart, considering we have Rebirth Island good movement and uh the car 98k and mp5 however this game doesn't fall short it feels like everything that modern warfare 2 should have been but they kind of fumbled the bag and now modern warfare 3 is cleaning up the mess and now we have a beautiful beautiful game but let me go back on my note do i think that this game is perfect uh no i've only really done the camel challenges i haven't played warzone just yet but i will say that overall i am having fun and if i had to scale this game on a scale 1 through 10 i give the modern warfare 3 experience so far a solid 7.5 to 8 out of 10 there's been minimal glitches there's been a ton of new content the maps and movement feel overall pretty good and i think this is a great launch to modern warfare 3 and i think with continuous updates and the steps in the right direction i believe by maybe season one or two of the game we'll be in a really solid position especially with rebirth right around the corner to even thoroughly say this might be better than modern warfare 2 excuse me modern warfare 2019 on a scale of 1 through 10 modern warfare 2019 because of the nostalgia and honestly just being the pioneer of it all i gotta give it a 10 out of 10 modern warfare 2 i gave it a solid 3 out of 10 it was so much restriction you only have one play style one play style only and overall man it just the sentinel gamers won last year you were only able to play one way and uh, gameplays got boring. But now with Modern Warfare 3, I think it opens up the avenue uh, in a balanced way um, to now have different play styles, whether you're a movement guy, you want to camp or troll or snipe or do any of that. I think we're now slowly opening up the lanes to have the options to do so. Do I think it's just as good as MW 2019? No. I think eventually we will get there. Uh, but until then, I've been enjoying the, uh, well, I enjoyed the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer grind. Now I'm going to do the zombie grind, but also Overall, man, I think I'm going to go for some nukes as well, which I heard has been a lot of fun for players like Chris and stuff like that. But it looks like we're wrapping up the Forge camo, so let me go ahead and tell you guys about the Priceless camo grind. Here's a look at the Priceless camo. Now, me personally, let me know in the comments. I think Priceless is better than Interstellar. It just overall has that nice vibey look to it compared to Interstellar. And don't get me wrong, this camo is very pretty and one of the best, but I just think Priceless has a little bit more vibrance that I enjoy. And I don't have it unlocked just yet, but even the uh, Mastery camo for zombies, which I'm currently grinding for, as you can see down there, uh, this one might be my number one, then Priceless, then Interstellar. But now going to the Priceless challenges, you will not see a challenge you have not yet seen before. All these challenges are now are the same challenge you've seen with Gold and Forge, however, just a higher player count or a higher elimination count. For example, this is just get 10 eliminations with players affected with a stun while in tax stance. If you guys heard me talk about the Golden challenges, you just have to rock those three attachments and go ahead, go into a free-for-all match, get a stun, and you're out. And Priceless was actually the fastest grind for me. It took me roughly about seven hours. Forge took me, I'd say, around 20 and then gold it took me about 60 hours combined so gold took me around 30 and some change but once you get to priceless it's going to be smooth as sailing there wasn't a challenge that i struggle with here and the good thing about this challenge is if you enjoy priceless and you don't want to go for interstellar you just have to do the challenges for priceless and you don't have to do the last one for the interstellar meaning if you want to unlock interstellar you have to do 36 weapons for the priceless challenge but because priceless is so cool you could just pick and choose maybe ars and subs that you want to do and you don't have to do them all at once and you can get this done all right now i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my settings and there's been a couple different changes to it i highly recommend kind of copying it bar for bar and then going and changing it off your preference from that so at least you have a base but the biggest thing here are your dead zone inputs now a lot of you guys complain about having stick drift and this is the perfect way to see if it is on your controller or not so first thing you want to do is turn this on move your sticks around and then let go as you can see there's no drift because my thumbsticks are going right back to the center every single time no matter what however the lower i go making my sticks a little bit more sensitive there's a higher chance that your sticks will have drift so here i'm on 4-4 four, four. i'll go ahead and turn it 
and you can see the stick on the right has a bit of stick drift i'll do it again and so they're not going to always center because of that stick drift that i have and it's almost impossible to kind of counter stick drift no matter how many times you try but if you keep kind of playing with the tension you have on this new setting you'll see that you'll find a sweet spot and you keep testing and for me it's going to be around nine eight nine or ten and it'll be different for everybody in the game now going down my aiming category this is what i currently have and what i currently recommend um especially this setting right here make sure you have this off that's going to help a lot with the aim assist going down my gameplay this is everything i had a lot of this is copied over from warzone and will affect warzone but i highly recommend just kind of double check and make sure everything looks good as we go down here boom now going to my graphic settings i am on a 4090 pc so a lot of these settings might not resemble for my console players however when i go down to the last tab being view you're gonna see a lot of things that i would recommend kind of copying for me as well that being my field fov going to affected wide wide turning stuff like this off going to first person movement on least that'll go ahead and make the minimal camera movement and make your movement a lot more fluid and then for my audio if you guys are wondering this is what my audio settings look like as well i am currently rocking two earbuds i go between my kiwi iems as well as my razors um iems as well about a 75 dollar headset and a 250 dollar headset but most importantly these are the kind of big settings i have in the game and last we have interface and these are kind of what makes my game look so vibrant alongside my pc settings but if you're on console i would recommend having this you go all the way up here to where your crosses are make sure that's on static and your color customization options Make sure you have it on custom you can change these your preference but also color filter have it on filter too. both max this out and then you can play around with the bottom one i have it on zero at the moment but you can max that out for more vibrance hopefully you guys enjoyed the video drop a sub and i'll see you in the next one